to the University of Iowa's How to Play Video of Humans vs. Zombies. The game is hosted by a great student organization called Riverfest, and we strongly suggest you check out the link below for information on future events as well as updates during the game. The following are the official Humans vs. Zombies rules as created by Brad Sappington and Chris Weed at Goucher College in 2005. We have modified the game for our campus in hopes of making the game more safe and more balanced. For those of you who don't know, Humans vs. Zombies is a huge game of tag. Every player begins as a human, and only one player is selected to be the original zombie. The original zombie, also known as the OZ, will begin tagging other human players, turning them into flesh-devouring zombies. Over time, the infection will begin to spread like wildfire, and it's up to the humans to band together to complete the final mission at the end of the game. The game officially begins on April 10th and lasts until the final mission, April 15th. Warning, the game also ends if the humans fail to complete the final mission Friday, April 15th, or if the zombies manage to infect every human in the game. Alright, let's go over equipment. You must have all of these on you at all times in order to participate in this game. And that's it. Now that you're suited up, let me explain how the game actually works. The entire campus is the entire playing field, and it's actually divided into two areas, the kill zones and the safe zones. Here are some examples of some safe zones. We've got the dorm rooms, the bathrooms, the dining halls, we got academic buildings, the library, the rec center, and field house. Also, buses and other forms of mass transportation are considered safe zones. However, the moment you step out of the bus, you're technically in the kill zone. Now that we're done talking about the safe zones and kill zones, let's talk about the rules. The following are rules specifically for humans. All right, rule number one, staying on campus. All human players are required to stay on campus throughout the entire game from April 10th to April 15th. Rule number two, your ID number. You must carry around an index card with your specific ID number that you should have received during registration. You must keep that card on you at all times. Rule number three, stunning zombies. When a human player takes a step out into the kill zone, they're allowed to use their balls of socks to stun a zombie, thus taking them out of the game until the next wave respawn time. Rule number four, being tagged by a zombie. If you unfortunately fall prey to a zombie, you must give them your ID card with your number so that they can punch it into the system. From that point, you must take off your armband and put it around your head because you've now just been converted to the zombie horde. Rule number five, wearing the headband. All human players must have their armbands completely visible and a distinct color from what they're wearing. You may not disguise it in any way whatsoever. The following rules are specifically meant for zombies. Rule number one, feeding. Every zombie is required to get a kill every 48 hours. When they get a kill, they must take the ID card of the human they killed and register it online for it to actually count. Also, zombies are allowed to share the kill with up to three other players. Rule number two, wearing the headband. All zombies must wear the headband throughout the entire week when they become a zombie. The headband must be completely visible. They're not allowed to cover it, disguise it in any way, so that means no hoods, long hair, etc. Please take this rule into consideration. There were major issues last semester. Rule number three, tagging. When you tag a human, they're killed. Specifically, a tag is a firm touch. Rule number four, getting socked. If you unfortunately get socked by a human while trying to tag them, you're technically stunned for a certain amount of time. The respawn time will happen every 15 minutes of the hour. So at 0, 15, 30, 45, and back to the top of the hour is when you're allowed to jump back into the game. So for example, say you get socked at about 3.08. If you get socked at 3.08, you can come back into the game by 3.15. If you get socked at 3.14, you can still come back at 3.15. Lastly, if you do get socked at 3.15, benefit of the doubt goes to the human and you must wait all the way till 
So once again, respawn times are 15, 30, 45, and 60. Okay. The following rules are some issues that we're trying to fix from last semester's game. All right, rule number one. When a zombie is pegged by a sock, they must immediately take their headband and pull it to their neck. This symbolizes that they are out of the game and incapacitated until the next wave. If your headband is on your neck, you may not tag other players. They are out of play and they may not take sock bullets and cover for their teammates. Rule number two, no shields. Zombies, you cannot use shields to block socks. Rule number three, all academic activities that are held outside are all considered safe zones. Rule number four. All right, players, I've given you everything you need to know. You know the rules, you know how to stay alive. Do you have what it takes? Good luck out there, and Godspeed.